For our United Way Spotlight of the Week, we have Kingston Interval House, and I'm joined by Lee Martins. Hey, Lee, nice to see you again. Hi, nice to see you again. So you are still open. You've been open through this whole thing. Is the uh, Well, first of all, I guess we should tell people what Interval House is, just in case someone doesn't know. Please fill us in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Kingston Interval House, um, if you're not from Kingston, we've been here for a very long time. We've been established in the community since 1975, actually. Um, and we run a number of services that are for women, children and youth um, who've been impacted by domestic violence. So uh, we do this through our 24 hour crisis line. We have an emergency shelter. We have second stage housing, um, which is called Robin's Hope. Um, we have outreach counseling services for women, children, and youth. So um, with specific services uh, for indigenous and French language. Uh, and then we have our volunteer program and training and education as well. Um, now, obviously those have shifted a little with COVID. So um, I can speak to that, but everything is still running. Um, we've just sort of adjusted as we need to as the pandemic has continued. And do I understand the need is even greater now than it was pre-pandemic? I would say, um, you know, we don't have necessarily statistics yet because I think we're still sort of gathering our numbers, but I would definitely say that um, as the lockdowns continue, that um, violence against women is still happening. Domestic violence is still happening there's just less chance for women and children to get out and get to a safe place and ask for help. So um, I think our numbers have sort of ebbed and flowed as the lockdowns have continued. Um, and that's worrisome when our numbers um, dropped and when I, our calls were not coming in, it's, it's worrisome because we know it's still happening. Um, so we're just trying to get our message out there as much as possible that you know, when it's a stay at home order, an emergency order, that doesn't mean that you can't leave if you need help. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't reach out to a neighbor, that you can't reach out to the person at the store, uh, call us. Um, we're still open. We have so many safety precautions in place, you know, our shelter to make sure in our second stage that everybody's safe, uh, it's clean, and there's better options if, uh, if you don't want to be home if it's not safe there. So uh, really just trying to get that message out. There's lots of agencies in the community doing the same thing that, you know, there's there's more than more than just staying at home options if it's not safe. Something that occurred to me as I was walking to the studio today, it, it seems that there's all kinds of warning signs, and we wait until the the warning signs become they escalate, and by that time you've ignored it all along. You've gone through engagement and marriage and maybe a couple of kids, and then, and and. Could we talk about what are some of the warning signs that, and I'm thinking teenage girls, some of them, I, I can't believe what they're putting up with and why, <laughs> why do you think you have to? Um, what are some of the warning signs that, that should put someone's antenna, maybe in the dating stage or the engagement stage? Yeah, and we, we call them like red flags or that gut instinct. Um, having said that, it can happen very quickly. Uh, and we've talked to women who, you know, have been dating just a short couple of weeks and things started to escalate already. So, um, and then other women that have been in longer relationships and it sl slowly creeped up until it became uh, too much or it, it escalated a lot. So things like, you know, really trying to get control right away. So one person trying to control what the other person does, what they say, what they do, what they wear, really um, cutting the person down and cutting down the people around them. So they're really trying to isolate them even more. So, uh, you know, saying things like, oh, I don't like that friend Susie. She's not a good influence. You shouldn't hang out with her. Um, you know, that, that could be a warning that they're trying to sort of isolate you and get you away from your supports. Um, you know, doing things that are trying to sort of scare you and intimidate you to see what your reaction is and sort of to, again, get that control. Um, I mean, there's so many different things. If things are rushing too quickly, if it feels really like, you know, we've only been dating two weeks, but already you're talking about us moving in, it's probably problematic, right? So, um, and I want to say that, you know, we often have that gut instinct, trust it trust it because that's your that's 
your body telling you that something doesn't feel right or your mind or it's coming together and it's saying, you know what, this doesn't feel like it's right and I need to listen to it. And maybe talk to someone else. Sometimes your friends who have met this person are already saying, oh, geez, I hope she knows what she's doing. But mm -hmm. they don't want to rain on your parade. You're so happy and you're, so you think you're in love and all the rest and they don't say anything. But maybe this is not a bad time to say to your friends, remember that fellow, you know, what did you actually think? Come on, tell me, tell me the truth mm -hmm. here. And sometimes when you're not starry eyed, uh, you're, you're a little more objective about someone's behavior because they don't pull yeah. in their horns when your friends are around. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that oftentimes uh, the partner will be Mr. Charming around everybody else. And that's what's really difficult for women is that there's this way that they act in public and then there's the way that they act at home. So the main thing, the main message with that is believe women. Like when they say that something's happened, if your friend comes forward and you're thinking, wow, I would never expect that. He's not acting the same way around you as he's acting around her. Believe her, please, <laughs> because she's coming to you to speak up and say something. And she's she's asking for help, essentially. Right. So um, just, yeah, listen, listen and ask her what she needs. So if if I ran into something like that, if I had um, a friend who talked to me about that, can I phone you and say, I have a friend and I'm really concerned about her? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So our 24 hour crisis line, anybody can call. We often have people call and sort of gather information and then they can take it back to their friends. So they can say, you know what, it's almost like a soft call. I've called Interval House. They're really wonderful. I spoke to so-and-so and she said, you know, if you need to come in there, there's all these services. Um, so oftentimes we do have um, family or friends reach out. And then um, women can call too. They don't have to give us their name. They can call and just ask for information and talk it out um, with somebody who will have an understanding of what they're going through. So yeah, yeah. Um, and and one I, I read on your website is if someone does call Interval House, then immediately after you hang up, call somebody else so that the last call, the last call made on the phone doesn't come up as Interval House because that yeah. could kind of catch somebody like, what are you doing calling that place? Mm -hmm. Oh dear, well, so you have a good relationship with the United Way. Uh, tell me how that's working for you. Yeah, so we, um, I mean, we get annual allocations from United Way um, as one of the member agencies. So that helps us to run our shelter. Um, I talked about our second stage housing, which we call Robin's Hope. Um, Robin's Hope is completely donor funded. So what's been really helpful with United Way is that we sometimes will get investment grants to help us run programs here. So for instance, part of my job is running a volunteer program. They helped us to get that program started. Um, we have our supportive housing coordinator here who is essential to running this building they are funding that position. Um, and then during COVID, we got emergency funds for cleaning supplies, um, transportation costs, because you don't really think about it, but we have women living in the building. So there's 18 fully furnished units. They live independently. There's support here if they need it. But we had women coming forward and saying, you know, normally I get my friend to drive me to go get groceries, but we are not allowed to be together. So how do I go to the grocery store? So getting funds for transportation costs, getting grocery cards have been so helpful. Um, we've had some of our outreach clients who are in the community on their own, reach out to the counselors and say, you know, the kids are home, we're eating more. The kids aren't at getting the programs at school where they can get a lunch and breakfast. And we're running out of groceries before we have the funds to go buy more. So being able to hand out those gift cards has been so helpful. It, and we've got funds from United Way for that. Thank you so much for being with us today and filling us in on uh, Interval Heights. Thank you so much for having me.